Robert Kappa is best known as one of the most famous photojournalists of the mid 20th century. Kappa arrived in Paris from Budapest in 1933. He became a working photojournalist, photographing the demonstrations in Paris during that time. And when the Spanish Civil War broke out in 1936, he knew he had to be at the front to cover the Spanish Civil War. So he, along with three of his, two of his colleagues, produced some of the most important photographs from the Spanish Civil War for the international press. It was always known he took color photographs, but no one really knew what they were. In the Kappa archive, there was a box that said Kappa Color. One day we decided that we would explore, and it was really extraordinary to find that he didn't just take a few color photographs, but actually from 1941 on until his death, photographed in color almost every story that he did in black and white. We know that Kappa used color film first in 1938 when he was in China. Um, there's a letter that he wrote to his brother saying he was very excited about color film and he wanted him to send 12 rolls of film. All we have are four color prints that were published in life from China. And Kodachrome was a very special process invented by Kodak. You sent it off, they processed it, and then sent it back to you. So that was at least a delay of two weeks or three weeks. It was not very good for spot news or any news um, since it took so much time in comparison to black and white film. Kappa arrived in New York in 1939. He escaped France where it became too difficult for him to work as a photojournalist. He was a foreigner, Jewish, very communist sympathizer. And it was at first hard for him to get assignments. And when the war started in Europe, he convinced the Saturday Evening Post magazine to pay in advance a story about him going over to Europe and that he would photograph in color and black and white. Color was something that he wanted to offer to the magazines as something new and exciting, um, something different than you know, some other photojournalists. And it was something that the magazines were just starting to publish. I think what's so interesting is how much information is lost in black and white. Despite the fact that it's, you know, there's an abstract sort of timeless quality to black and white, there's so much information on the color of the uniforms or the, the color of the faces that is, I think, so valuable to us now and so interesting, um, you know, 60 years later to look back at these photographs from World War II, which is a war mostly known in black and white. It was really a struggle to work freely out in the field and make photographs and to also sell them. So there's a letter from 1938 from China. He writes to his, his friend in New York at the agency, the PIX agency, saying that he's sort of imagining this agency that he could create and that they could all work together and combine forces because it, you know, it would free up the photographer to, to travel and then the agency to sell the work. And it really wasn't until 1947 when he realized his dream to create an agency that he called Magnum Photos. Magnum was his real project and it was a very all-consuming task for him to keep it financially viable. After the war, uh, there was a new magazine called Holiday that was part of the Saturday Evening Post circle of, of magazines, and it was really a post-war travel magazine. You know, a lot of Kappa's work fit so perfectly into Holiday, and he really had a very strong relationship with the editors. He actually started working as an, as an author, which again is something that's not really known about his work so well. Um, and he was a very entertaining writer and very playful, and I think they worked perfectly with this sort of post-war exuberance and this, the, the humor in the color, color work. A story he wanted to do on um, Megev early in 1948, he loved skiing. He went skiing every year and um, I obviously he wanted to marry something that was very pleasurable for him and something professional that he could sell. It was a story that worked so well in color for him um, because it was about a kind of release. Two projects in this exhibition um, that included his Magnum colleagues was the special issue of Holiday Magazine about Paris. And then in 1950, a, a group of them were talking about 
um, the youth of, that, of the post-war period and very curious on what they were thinking. And so Kappa drummed up this uh, project called Generation X and that his colleagues would all choose either a boy or a girl in the territories and countries they were working and do a photographic report on them. The Rome story is fascinating to me because he totally turns his back on the rubble of Rome, the poverty of Rome, and embraces La Dolce Vita and the beauty, and he finds uh, Capuchin, and he finds another American actress, and he follows them. You know, that's the story that he tells very well. He also knows that's the story that's going to sell. Kappa became friends with a number of directors and actors over his travels. So that when he started photographing film set, it wasn't so much um, a cold assignment, but it was really something more personal. 1953, he writes a letter to his editor and colleague John Morris at Magnum, saying that the motley period of film sets and Deauville and Biarritz is over and he wants to get back to serious work, uh, serious war stories. There was Indochina, it was something that he could photograph. He wasn't quite engaged, but he was gonna try. So he went and um, it was a time where there had been a, a big conflict that was starting to um, recede and so he was, he was really there if something happened again. He, got off of the truck that they were traveling in and decided to walk on his own. Typical of Kappa, just trying to you know, search for his own photographs on his own without anyone, anyone distracting him, um, and stepped on a landmine and was killed almost instantly. Part of the reason why Kappa was such a good photographer is because he approached every story seriously, and he would get to know what was interesting, what was important. You know, so much of his work was about telling people what it's really like, whether it was a war or whether it was, you know, life in the Soviet Union after World War II.